can't mistake the sound of a pipe organ, nor can you overestimate the place it holds in our musical heritage. As part of our occasional series on the instruments, Eugenia Zuckerman takes a closer look at the mightiest of them all. To see the wood, sheet metal, ebony, cow bones, hides, and all that other paraphernalia, you'd never think you're looking at the king of instruments, but you are. Pipe organs give new meaning to the expression, the whole is more than the sum of its part. In that chamber, live some of the most magical sounds on earth. Edward Stout is curator of the organ at Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. Now really, an organ is just a collection of whistles of different tones and different colors and different pitches. Make that thousands of whistles, varying in length from a few inches to as long as 32 feet. Oh my goodness! But like all whistles, this they is, need this air. This is the turbine, which has a series of fans. Edward Stout took us behind the scenes to see how the 8,000 pipe organ at Grace Cathedral works. And this is running most of the organ. So these are like primary bellows. Oh, I see. It's, it's oh, yeah. it'll, it'll, oh, look at he's He's playing big chords. He's, he's using a lot of wind. Its various components are located all over the church. This is the pedal department of the organ. It goes up three floors. You want to go up to the first landing? We'll sure. go up to the first landing. All of the pipes to maintain their pitch have to speak at full blown volume. So if you want to quiet a section of the organ down, the organist has a pedal that he can control and there's a pneumatic engine that pulls these thick wooden louvers shut. a contraption a pipe organ is, it's surprising to learn it's one of the earliest instruments dating back to the third century BC. There were uh, smaller organs, they probably weren't much bigger than this, that uh, worked with pipes and uh, keys to play them and they used air pressure that was created by a water pump sort of thing. And uh, Nero apparently played this instrument called the hydraulis because of the way it used water to create the pressure. Craig Whitney, an editor for the New York Times and himself an amateur organist, has written a book called All the Stops. They developed the technology in the Middle Ages. Um, they became quite big and complex and could make a lot of noise. In fact, we think that probably the main purpose of a large pipe organ in a medieval English uh, cathedral was just to make a loud enough noise to get everybody to be quiet. Just making noise, of course, doesn't warrant the title King of Instruments. Enter Johann Sebastian Bach, who not only made that noise joyful, but gave it majesty. How does one learn how to write for the organ? You have to play it. So, Bach was a great organist? He was perhaps the greatest of all organists. Anthony Newman is world-renowned as an organ soloist. It always gives me goosebumps to play these big Bach works on a big sounding instrument, uh, because the harmonies are so grand, and because Bach, of course, felt that, that's why he wrote the piece. There's no other instrument that could hold that kind of intensity. Even a full orchestra can't hold it. So. I want to talk to you about the choreography of the dance, because your feet are dancing. All organ music has an independent pedal part. I theorize that if you didn't study pedals before you were 10 or 11, that you cannot find the coordination. Then consider that no two pipe organs are exactly the same. Each instrument has different configurations of pipes, pedals, and keyboards, and a unique assortment of knobs called stops, which control the volume and quality of sounds. The issue with the instrument is to overcome the mechanics of it. You can get bogged down, especially an organ this size, with the mechanical qualities and be unable to make something that sounds like music. Add to that complexity the fact that most pipe organs are in public spaces, which means there's very little opportunity to practice. 
I mean, you have to be nuts. Maybe you that's the thing to be nuts to You do have to be nuts, nuts to play, to play this, this instrument. No question. You have to be a little crazy. Uh, I think part of it is that, you know, here I am with this immense amount of power in front of me, alone, aloof, with only birds and God. Thank you.